<coughs> my father's uh, name, Frederick Reimers, Friedrich in German, and uh, he was known as Fred in Canada. Um, my mother, Erna, she was a nurse, and again, back to my father, he was uh, one of four sons born on a dairy farm, which his parents owned. After the war, uh, the eldest uh, got the farm, and my father was out uh, looking for a job. And uh, I could say times were tough in Germany, but uh, he came home in uh, January of 1954 uh, with the news that Canada was indeed looking for people to uh, settle and uh, work in the country, doing a lot of jobs that uh, were menial to start, but uh, then led to better things later uh, for them. Uh, finding out in January of 54 that that was a possibility uh, things moved uh, quite quickly. My mother uh, was a little hesitant at first, but uh, the more they talked about it, uh, the faster things moved. And by April of that same year, only four months later, we were in fact on a ship, the Seven Seas, which left uh, Bremerhaven in Germany, northwest corner of Germany. And there, uh, along with uh, what ended up being about 1,500 people. Um, that included a stop in Rotterdam, Holland, where we picked up more passengers and more immigrants, like ourselves, uh, to settle in Canada. And it was an 11 day journey across the ocean. And uh, I remember being, uh, well, <laughs> a bit sick on the ship. Uh, simply seasickness. My parents were as well, but the uh, the sights and the smells of everything new, something you'd never seen. Um, and as kids, we didn't get the full understanding of what everything was about, but I could see the tears in in a lot of the adults' eyes as uh, crossing started and as the ship left Rotterdam. Finally, uh, there was music playing and, you know, these sad uh, going away songs and uh, who knows when they would ever uh, come back. Uh, it would be a long time for many. Uh, in my parents' case, it was 14 years after they came to Canada. But uh, nevertheless, the, uh, the voyage was, uh, was otherwise uneventful, other than a bit of rough seas and seasickness. And I do remember uh, seeing a, a ship about one-tenth the size of our own, and it was getting bobbed around like a cork. <laughs> and I figured, well, I'm sick, but obviously those people are a lot more sick than I am. So the first sight of land, which was a big deal after about 10 days on the, on the ocean, uh, was... Uh, I think it was the Avalon Peninsula in uh, Newfoundland uh, as we entered the uh, Gulf of St. Lawrence. And of course I didn't know any of that then, but uh, having done a fair bit of uh, research in the past and, and uh, studying maps, which later became part of my, uh, my chosen career, that uh, I knew exactly what piece of land we probably saw. So uh, down the St. Lawrence and of course to a, a kid, the uh, houses on the shore look miniature because they're so far away. But then as the river narrowed, you can see that it wasn't uh, uh, a fairy tale land, it was, <laughs> it was real. And there we were finally in uh, Quebec City. And from there, uh, everybody was processed it would be immigration camps in Montreal and Cornwall. And from there, people would then be located in the country as to uh, what their qualifications were, whether they be farmers or carpenters or electricians, uh, wherever the need was, they went. And uh, you were actually uh, 
from the immigration camp, uh, which were old army barracks converted into, uh, into housing for the immigrants. Uh, you were then uh, chosen by some farmer in the, in the country, in our case it was farming, and uh, yeah, a couple of weeks later uh, a farmer came from uh, near, Mon near Ottawa and uh, picked up our family and off we went to live in their help house and uh, it, was, uh, it was a wonderful uh, experience, especially for kids because everything is new and exciting. Uh, for parents, I'm sure it was a different story. And I did see, see my parents. Well, my father, he was more homesick than my mother was, but, and she was the one that kept encouraging to, we got to do this now, we got to stay, and we're, we're not going back to Germany. And uh, I was going to school, and I guess I was the one to, to learn English. Uh, much more quickly than they were, and so I would help them out at home with the little bit of English that I was learning. But uh, it was a great time, and I look back on it fondly. Going back to our first year in Canada, I'd say the first few months, uh, there was some correspondence going on with another family that had been uh, picked up by a large nursery farm operation here in Niagara on the Lake. And in, uh, in the Ottawa area, there was a lot of uh, French, and we simply uh, had an easier time with the English part of it. Uh, going on to the family that first year, uh, uh, my parents, like I said, they, uh, they communicated uh, by letter with this family in Niagara, uh, who were telling them uh, constantly that uh, there are a lot more German-speaking people in the Niagara area, namely the Mennonite population, and that uh, it would be a good idea, maybe if uh, if we made that choice to uh, to come to Niagara as well. And so, after a year of knowing that a long-term settlement in the Ottawa area would probably not be uh, feasible for them uh, on, a, on a social level. Uh, they did decide to uh, make that move and a year later uh, we were on a, on a truck packed in the back and off we went to, uh, to Niagara.